and that's why we can say that we can see the bright spot or we can see the bright line or the waveform on the different sea of screen. Okay, so this is the function of this CRT that produce a sharply focused and high velocity electrons. These high velocity electrons before reaching the CRO screen, CRT screen, it passing through the two deflecting plate system, two deflecting plate systems, that is vertical deflecting plate system and horizontal okay. deflecting plate system. Okay, these vertical deflecting plates, there are two plates are there, voltages of opposite phase are applied to the current vertical deflecting plate. If the voltage on both plate is zero, CRO beam will be exactly at the center. If voltage on one plate is larger, then the beam will be moving in upward direction or downward direction. So depending upon the voltage applied to the vertical deflecting plates, the CRO beam will be moving either in the upward direction or in the lower direction. Okay, exactly the same way that's of an horizontal deflecting plates. When both volt when the voltage on both plates are same, beam will be at the center. Depending upon the voltage difference on the horizontal deflecting plates, the beam will be moving either in extreme right or extreme left. Okay. So the first stop system we have seen that CRT it produces a very sharply focused and high velocity electrons which are emitting from the electron gun and reach towards the fluorescent screen. Okay. Clear. Second one is the vertical amplifier. Okay. The vertical amplifier that is also called as Vertical, vertical input is applied to the vertical amplifier. Vertical input means with the CRO probe we are connecting the circuit to the CRO. Externally we are connecting the circuit or the signal generator or whatever is a circuit under test. That we are connecting with the CRO, CRO probe and, and it is connected to the CRO. Now where we are connecting it? We are connecting it to that of a vertical amplifier. So when the CRO is connected to the circuit, it get connected to that of a vertical amplifier. What a vertical amplifier means? As the name it suggests, it amplifies the signal. Okay? It amplifies the signal which is coming to the vertical input terminal. That is called as a Y input. Generally, it is called as a Y input. So, this voltage, this signal can be amplified by using the vertical amplifier. Now, this vertical amplifier, that amplification we can adjust. Amplification means how many times it has to be amplified. That can be addressed by the external control on the front panel CRO, which is called as volts per division. Okay, so the volts per division now on the CRO screen when we are changing, that means what we are changing, we are changing the voltage gain of this vertical amplifier. Okay, this vertical amplifier it is connected to that of a next system, which is called as delay line. This delay line it produces the two output waveforms which are out of the phase. And that is connected to that of a vertical deflecting phase. Okay, so this is the second system we have seen that is the vertical amplifier. Third one, we will go for the third one that is the time phase generator. Okay, what is time phase generator? Here, as we have seen, that voltage or any waveform will be displayed as the voltage with respect to time wave. So we are getting the signal which is very of the voltage with respect to time. In case of a CRO, there are two signals are there. One is called a vertical signal that is voltage, another is that of a horizontal signal that is time. And that time signal is generated by that of a third system of the CRO that is the time phase generator. Okay? Now this time phase generator it generates the waveform which is of or it is also called a sweep generator. So this time phase generator can be also called as a sweep generator. Why it is called as a sweep generator? Because it generates the sweep waveform. What a sweep waveform means? Now such type of the waveform is called as a sweep waveform. Okay? This type of waveform it is called as a sweep waveform. This is not a triangular wave even if it is sweep. But this is a sweep waveform. That means here the rising portion is more than that, is more than that of a rising portion. That is called a sweep interval and sweep. This is called a sweep interval which starting from some minimum voltage. That is V minimum. It will go to some maximum voltage yes. which can be considered as V maximum. Okay. So sweep waveform is what? The voltage will be increasing from the minimum towards the maximum. And that will be. Linear rise of the sweep voltage. 
So this wave voltage will be rising linearly from minimum to maximum. Okay. Okay. Afterward, it re reached to maximum and afterward it suddenly fall to that of a minimum level. You can see this time intervals that this is called as a sweep interval. This can be called as a retrace interval. Okay, such type of waveform is called as a sweep waveform. And that waveform is generated by that of a time based generator or sweep generator. Now, why this is important here? The in case of a CRO, because in case of a CRO, where there is the linear rise of the sweep waveform, the CRO spot that is moving from extreme left to extreme right. Okay, and therefore we can get the visual display of the waveform with respect to the time period. So when this CRO spot, when this linear rise is there, the CRO spot is moving from extreme left to extreme right. Okay. During this retrace time period, the voltage comes from maximum to minimum level. And this time period has to be very very small. Ts switch should be very greater than that of a retrace. This retrace time period has to be very very small because during this portion, the CRO spot is cut off. CRO D is cut off, CRO spot is not visible. And therefore, to minimize the loss of the waveform, the trace retrace interval should be smaller than that of a sweep interval. Okay? I repeat once again that during the sweep interval, CRO beam or CRO spot is moving from extreme left to extreme right. During the retrace interval, the electron beam will be cut off, you can't see anything. It again comes to its original position and we are getting the next cycle. So, to minimize the loss of the waveform, because during this period, the CRO beam will be cut off. To minimize the loss, TR has to be very small to that of a sweep interval that is TS. Okay? Now, how it is related with the reference CRO waveform? That if this linear rise portion is small, what will happen? We can see a large signal of the input voltage. So, input one cycle, it will be extended over the CRO screen, over the larger portion of it. Are you getting this? It is time per division. Time per division. Okay. If this is very large, if this is very small, then a large portion will be there. So how much portion of the CRO input signal, how much portion of the input signal has to visualize that depends upon the linear rise of this waveform. If this waveform is larger, then a smaller portion will be extended over the screen. If it is smaller, then exactly the reverse thing takes place. And therefore, this is called a sweep waveform. During the from minimum to maximum, the CRO beam is moving from extreme left to extreme right. Okay? And during this retrace time interval, CRO beam will be completely cut off. To minimize the loss of the input signal, TR should be much smaller than that of an EX. Retrace time interval has to be smaller than sweep interval. Okay? And we cannot uh, confine TR to zero. TR should be directly it should. Uh, TR should be directly zero. It can't be possible because there is the RC circuit. You can minimally split, but it cannot be exactly zero because the capacitor has to be discharged. Okay? So depending upon the resistance of the capacitor, we will see the circuits in detail of this time based generator. There is uh, resistor R and C circuit, and depending upon charging and discharging of the capacitor and the associated resistors, this TS and TR is greater than. Okay? So TR can be minimized, but it cannot be zero. Next circuit for this will be a horizontal amplifier. The horizontal amplifier, <coughs> here same as the vertical amplifier, the horizontal amplifier possesses the circuit as the amplifier. Here in this case, the name of this amplifier can be adjusted by external control on the CRO front panel. Can you guess what it can be? Time per division. Okay. So, gain of this horizontal amplifier can be adjusted externally by using the time per division. Okay. It also consists of the phase inverter. It also consists of the push-pull amplifier circuits, which gives the two output signals, which are applied to two different observatory amplifiers. Okay, so this vertical amplifier will apply the voltage to apply the signal to the vertical reflecting plates. Horizontal amplifier applies the signal to the horizontal reflecting plates. Both both these signals are totally independent of each other and therefore we can trace the CRO's point anywhere on the screen. Both movements are independent with each other, so we can trace it out anywhere on the screen. Clear? Now what's the remaining case? 
delay time and trigger circuit. Okay, so this delay time and trigger circuit here, these are the things which are used, these are the circuits which are used to make the waveform as a stable waveform. Okay, stable waveform means when you are functioning, when you are working with the CRO, you can see that the waveform is continuously moving, it can't be stable, and then it's not possible to take the measurements. Why it happens? Why the waveform is not remaining <coughs> stable? Because there is, it has to satisfy certain condition. What the condition is that that both waveforms or both signal has to be simultaneous as well as synchronized with each other. Both signal has to be simultaneous and synchronized with each other. When this condition is stabilized, then we are getting the stable waveform. We will see what it means. Here in this case, in the CRO, we can say that there are the two signals are there. Which two signals are there? Both signals means which two signals and which two signals we are getting it on the CR on this CRO? One I is vertical signal, one is horizontal signal. One signal is applied to the vertical deflecting plates, other is applied to the horizontal deflecting plates. So these two signals has to be simultaneous and they has to be synchronized with each other, then only we are getting the stable waveform. Okay? And that functioning of the simultaneous and synchronization is done by that of a delay line as well as trigger circuit. Okay? Now first we will see the simultaneous circuit. <coughs> simultaneous means here just see the vertical signals. This is the vertical signal, it passing through the vertical amplifier and then through the data line it is applied to the vertical reflecting plate. Another signal, a part of this signal is applied to that of a trigger circuit. Then it will goes, it triggers the circuit, then it goes to time based generator, uh, that time based generator, it has to generate the sweep waveform, then it will goes to that of a horizontal amplifier, and then afterward it goes to horizontal reflecting plate. So one signal to the Y input coming earlier, while the signal at the X input, it has to pass these all these three systems and then it comes at here. Okay, so both one signal is coming earlier, one will be coming later. Now there is the time delay which is of nearly 0 0.15 microseconds. But even if this much time delay is there, the CRO waveform will not be stable. And therefore, to delay the first signal, that is the vertical amplifier signal, to delay this first signal, there is the introduction of the delay line. So what the delay line do? It makes the signal to appear at the vertical reflective plates after some time delay. So that time delay has been said, that is the functioning of the delay line. Okay? So the first condition is fulfilled that both signals will be simultaneous. Second condition is both signals has to be synchronized with each other. Now what is word synchronization means? Both signal has to be their starting point has to be same. We will see that in detail when we see the next slide. So this synchronization means both signal, vertical as well as horizontal signal, there has to be starting point has to be same. Okay? Then only we are getting the stable CRP speed. Now <coughs> I will explain this synchronization means suppose I am start teaching you the CRO, you are thinking something else. You are thinking about the practicals or some other topics. Then what you are thinking about the some practical topics that means you are not in synchronized with me. <coughs> so if you are not synchronized what I am talking, you should synchronize yourself with me. Then only you will understand what I am talking here. If you are thinking something else, that means you are not in synchronization with me, you are not synchronized with me and therefore you won't understand anything. The same thing happens in case of CRO. If the starting point of this vertical and horizontal reflecting plates are the same, either any, anywhere, it has to be same for each cycle. And when it is same at each cycle, there will be a in the stable display. Okay? That means both signals has to be synchronized with each other. And how this synchronization can be done? That is done by the external control, the, which is called a trigger circuit. Okay? Now what is trigger circuit do? That it takes some input from the vertical amplifier that is applied to the trigger circuit. So this trigger circuit has the input from the vertical amplifier. Then trigger circuit 
trigger itself when the vertical signal is there and then accordingly it gives the output to that of a time based generator it gives the order to time based generator to generate the sorting waveform then to horizontal amplifier and then to that of a vertical input okay this control can be adjusted or here this can be adjusted by the external control on the zero front tunnel can you guess what it is to trigger the setting if the waveform is not stable if it is unstable continuously moving hold, then what we are doing hold, hold, is hold or we are using a triggering knob that means or uh, it is also called a level knob so when we are using that leveling or triggering knob what, what it means that we are tuning this circuit with that of a vertical amplifier signal okay this trigger can be done either vertical signal or with that of an external signal which we require for the messages trigger or it can be done with that of a line voltage also okay so this trigger that is the functioning of this triggering circuit so all these systems are work in synchronize with each other to give a stable CRO display okay I repeat this once again first is the CRT CRT what it do it produce a sharply focused and high velocity electrons that high velocity electron it reach towards the CRO screen the screen is coated with that of a phosphor material this CRT screen is coated with the phosphor material when this high velocity electron strikes on it phosphor material acquire all the kinetic energy and display it in the form of visible spectrum and we can see the hidden spot on there then second is the vertical amplifier that vertical amplifier it takes the input from the CRO probe under the circuit under test then the gain of this vertical amplifier can be adjusted externally by holes per division okay this vertical amplifier it, project, it consists of the phase inverter as well as the amplifier circuit which produces the output output voltage that is applied to the top and delay line and delay line gives the voltage to the top and vertical rotating plates okay if voltage on both plates are same then CRO will be at the center. If voltage of any plane is greater than the order, accordingly the beam will be shifted either in upward direction or in yeah. lower direction. Okay? Then a part of this, uh, a sample of this vertical, sample we should say, sample of this vertical amplifier is applied to the amplifier trigger circuit which triggers, which generates a waveform. That waveform it will be applied to the time based generator. Time based generator generates a sweep waveform which will get applied to the top and horizontal amplifier and then it will go to horizontal reflecting plates. Okay, so this is how the CRO works, which gives a display or the visual display of the waveform under test. Is it clear? Any doubt is there? Now we go for the next one. <coughs> That is first system that is CRT, which is called an cathode ray tube. CRT is called an heart of the CRO, that is the cathode ray tube. Now, this CRT that is a cathode ray tube, it consists of Now this CRT, the main parts of the CRT is that of an first is the electron gun. This electron gun it consists of filament. This consists of the control grid. And third, it consists of an deflecting plate system. So, it's not the deflecting, it's the anode system. Okay, so this first electron gun, it consists of a filament, then control grid and anode system. Second part of the CRT, it is made up of the deflecting system. These deflecting systems are of the two kinds, that is vertical deflecting system and horizontal deflecting system. In short, it is called an vertical deflecting plates and 
horizontal defecting plates. And third one is the CRP screen. These are part of the CRP. Three parts are there. First one is the electron gun, deflating plates, and CRP screen. Now, this first one is that of an electron gun. As we said that the electron gun, what it do? It produces a very sharply focused and high speed electron, which can be strikes on the CRT screen. This velocity of this electron is such that it is exactly it is compared as that of a bullet fired from a gun. So, same speed it will happen, same speed it will take and it strikes on that of a fluorescent screen. Now, what is the electron gun? It consists of it consists of the filament. Here you can see that this is the filament is there. Okay. Now, this yes. This is a micro coil metal. Filament is metal. Filament is a simple wire. It may be a nitrogen, it may be a platinum, it may be copper. A simple wire which will get heated. Now, this simple wire, filament wire, it is connected to the current AC supply. So, because of this AC supply, the wire will get heated. When this wire is heated, what will happen? There will be the emission of the electrons. That electrons are called as thermionic emission, therm thermo electrons, thermionic emission. Yep. That is because of the heat, the electrons are emitted. Okay? So, these electrons, which are emitting from this filament, they are the thermo electrons, they are thermodynamic in all directions. Okay? The next will be that of a control grid. What is control grid? Is? It is a metallic cylinder. You can see here this pink color. There is a metallic cylinder that has a small hole at the center. Okay, it has the small hole at the center for what purpose? So that diverted beam can be committed in the firing signal line. Okay, so this diverted beam from the filament from the heater, we can say that that will be passing through the control grain which has a small hole at the center so that we are getting a fine beam of the electron. Okay, what are functioning of this control grain? On this control grid, there is a negative voltage applied. Negative voltage will be applied on that of hand control grid. What is the use of this negative voltage applied on this control grid? Suppose the control grid voltage is more negative. If we use the grid bias, we can say that when we increase the grid bias, that means when we increase the negative voltage of the control grid, what will happen? Less number of the electron can pass it. Because electrons will get repaid, which are emitting from this. As the control grid is increased, grid of ice is increased, control grid voltage is increased, the electron will be repaired, and less number of the electrons will be passing through this, it will be spread through the zero screen. Okay? When we reduce the control grid voltage, what will happen? More electrons. More electrons, exactly. So more electrons will be passing through this, we are getting more number of the electrons striking on, the, on this CRT screen. When more number of the electrons striking on the CRT screen, that means we are getting a bright spot. When less number of the electrons striking on the CRT screen, that means we are getting a faint spot. Okay? So, this bright spot or the electron we are testing, it can be changed either faint or it will be a brighter one. Okay? And that how we can adjust by adjusting the negative voltage on the control grid. And then we can do it externally by the CRO proton and control. What it can be? What it called as? Focus. Focus. Not focus. focus. It is the intensity. intensity. So first the intensity now. When you put the CRO on, we are adjusting the intensity. That means what we are adjusting? You are adjusting the voltage on the of hand control grid. Okay? So by adjusting the intensity now on the CRO front panel, we are adjusting the voltage on this control grid. Okay? Accordingly, the number of the electron reaching towards the screen will be either increased or it will be decreased. So, accordingly, the intensity of the beam will be adjusted. Follow this here. Next is that of an anode system. Now, this anode system it is called because here there are three types of anodes are there. Not one single, three types of anodes that is pre accelerating anode, focusing anode, and accelerating anode. So, three anodes are there, that's why it is called an anode system. Okay, we will see this in detail. <coughs> For this, next slide. Oh. Here, this curve, you can see this diagram here proper. This is the filament or the heater, which is called as a, which emits the electron, which is passing to the next block, which is called as a 
control layer. This is the metallic center which has a small hole in the center. After that, there are one, two, and three. Three anodes are there. And that three anode, it consists of an anode system. But the first anode in this, that is called an free exciting anode. In between, it is called an focusing anode. Third one is called an exciting anode. Okay? Now, how is three and how is it functioning for that? Now we have to see the electrostatic focusing. These three anodes, it can be worn as a double convex electrostatic lens. Okay? This, how it works for that? Now just keep the CR aside. We will see what it means first. And then we will see how it will link with that of a CR. So, first we will see the electrostatic focusing. Okay? And then we will see how this link with that of an anode system so that we can get the double convex lens effect in case of an anode system in the CRT. So, what is electrostatic focusing is there are the two plates, one for this positive charges, another plate consists of negative charges. Okay? According to the rule of the electro electrostatic, when there are positive and negative charges, the field lines will be existing in between. Okay? These are the field lines. The direction of the field lines from positive to negative. As the basic concept of the electrostatic, the electric field is maximum at the center and it is minimum at the end. Okay? And that's why at the center you can see the straight line. At the end towards the plate, it will be slightly curved. Got it? Yes. So these are the electric field, field lines are there which is shown here. So these lines are slightly curved at the end. Now, if we join the point of the equal potential, okay, all these lines are not exactly same. Mm -hmm. So if we find out the lines of the equal potential on each of the electric field lines and we can draw, join it, that is gives an imaginary line which is can considered which is called an equipotential surface. Okay? What equipotential surface means? It is an imaginary surface which having the equal potential and all these points are equal potential and this is the imaginary line. Okay, clear this? Now what is related with the CRO? In case of NCRO, we can say that there are three anodes. One is pre accelerating another is focusing, third one is accelerating. Okay, let's consider the focusing and accelerating anode. Here in case of NCRO, the pre accelerating and accelerating anode will possess a positive voltage. While focusing anode it will consist of negative voltage. Okay, we are just expanding this part of this focusing anode and that of an accelerating anode. Okay? So in the next slide, we are expanding that part here. This is the focusing anode, this will be an accelerating anode. Focusing anode is applied with that of an negative potential. Accelerating anode possesses the positive potential. Okay? There are, there are the two difference. This is same as that of an angular plate, which we have seen up here. Okay? Similarly, the field lines will be existing. Here these horizontal lines will be the electric field lines will be there. That is from positive to Negative. Clear? So these are the field lines which are <coughs> existing at this end, also it will be there at here. So these horizontal lines will be an electric field lines. Then here we can draw the imaginary line, imaginary surface, not line, we can say the imaginary surface which is called an equipotential surface. So this will indicate an equipotential surface. Okay? Here it should. So this all the vertical lines they will be an equipotential surface. Follow this. Same thing will be existing with that of a focusing anode and pre-accelerating anode. Okay. So this is well, this will functioning as an electrostatic lens. What we use we see. So this is the first lens which are existing between pre-accelerating and focusing anode. Second electrostatic lens that is existing between focusing anode and accelerating anode. Is this clear? Yes. Now what, what the function of this? Now just see here. This is the CRT, the beam which is coming from the filament, a diverted beam passing through this control plate, and then it enters in the anode system. Now this here, the equipotential surface. This equipotential surface can be considered as an electrostatic lens if we 
financial surface can be considered as electrostatic lens. And it performs the same functioning as the optical lens performed with respect to the light, refracted light. Okay? I explain what it means. Let's consider the ordinary optical lens. This is one and two convex. Suppose two convex lens are there. This is the optical axis. If this is the surface, okay? This surface emits the light here. When it falls on that of an first lens, the first lens what it do? It refracted the light. Okay? So the light will get refracted. It will becomes parallel to the optic axis. Okay? They can be made parallel to the optic axis. Afterward, this parallel lens, they will be forced on that of a second lens. What the second lens will do? They will be refracted once again and they will be refracted once again and we are getting an image at a particular point here. Suppose we, this is our screen, then we are getting the reflected image on that of a screen. Okay? Here, in case of an CRO, this smooth UV potential surface will perform the same functioning as that of an optical lens towards the light. Here, the light beam from this, it will be diverted, it falls on the first electrostatic lens, then the lens will become parallel, okay, or not parallel, it will be slightly refracted, it falls on the second UV potential lens, and finally, they will be converted at the one point, okay, that one point. If there we are placing the CRP screen, we are getting a wave image of the whatever is the input signal which is coming from the source. Okay? So whatever is the input signal, right, we are getting the same image on that of a CRP screen. Now this focal lens of the electrostatic lens, it can be adjusted externally of the CRP panel control. Okay? Focal length of this electrostatic lens, this double convex lens of this can be adjusted on the CRP panel control. How to adjust it? Here, the pre accelerating and accelerating is connected to positive voltage, while the focusing error will be connected to the top and negative potential. If we change this positive and negative potential, what will happen? The position of the equipotential surface will get changed, and accordingly, the diverted beam direction will get changed, and we will get a proper sharpness of the image in the there. Okay? So, if we increase the negative voltage on this focusing error, the focusing error possesses a negative voltage. How can we do it externally? By adjusting the knob as focus. So when we change the knob of the focus on the CRO, that means what we are changing? We are changing the voltage on the focusing arrow. We adjust the negative voltage on this focusing arrow. When we change the negative voltage of the focusing arrow, naturally the electric field, equipotential surface and the diffraction or the refraction of the beam will get changed. Okay? So these Focusing, if it is on the screen, if it is not a sharply focused beam, then what we are adjusting is we are adjusting the focus knob. We are adjusting the focus knob means we are adjusting the voltage or the of a focusing arrow, negative voltage. Similarly, we can adjust the positive voltage on the accelerating and pre accelerating arrow. That is also we can do it externally by the external control of the CRO. Can you do that many times? If the focusing is not working properly, the shock spot is not a sharper or round. It can be very rarely we are using and that control is called the astigmatism control. So if the astigmatism now on the CRO, that voltage on the accelerating and pre-accelerating arrow can also be adjusted. But as this voltage is very high, high voltage means more than 1000 and 2000 volts. Okay, as of all, for focusing the CRO beam, we are adjusting the focus knob. That means ultimately we are adjusting the voltage on the uh, voltage on the Focusing and <coughs> clear. So this is the double convex lens system. The high velocity electron, which are emitting from this electron gun, will be fall on that of a CRO screen. Okay, clear. Now this CRO screen here it is coated with that of a phosphor material inside. That phosphor material it will be different depending upon the corresponding display we are getting it. Now, this phosphor material coated on the screen, on the screen there is also one triangular square plastic sheet is attached on this. Have you noticed this any times? Yes. Yeah. What it called? It is called an gratitude. 
What are use of this? Measurement. For measurement, for measuring the time voltage as well as for measuring the time voltage. So for taking the readings on the x and y axis, it is actually was it is a plastic sheet on which the corresponding horizontal and vertical lines of the mark has been marked, mark, and that is fit with the of a CO2 display. So that we can take the corresponding readings of this measurement of the time as well as voltage. Clear? So this is the first subsystem we are seeing. There is the CRT. That is cathode ray tube. It is the heart of the CRT tube. It possesses a very high beam electron and a sharply focused beam electron. All this control we can adjust on the CRT front panel by using the intensity now, focusing now, astigmatism now. Then, after this, it will move to the second point. That is, this electron beam. After this, it will be passing through vertical extracting plates and horizontal extracting plates. Both these motions are totally independent on each other, so we can place the CRO beam anywhere on the screen. Okay? This voltage on this vertical extracting plate can be adjusted by how it is to be adjusted by extra gun control that is called by volts per meter. Volts per meter adjusts the gate of the vertical amplifier. But if the CRM beam is there, if you want to move it upward, which control we are using? Y position. Okay? So this Y position you are adjusting means what you are adjusting? You are adjusting the voltage on these two vertical deflective plates. Okay? If you want to move the beam in the horizontal direction, you are using the X position. That means we are adjusting the voltage on these horizontal deflective plates. Ma'am, what happens when we use two, uh, one input and one output? We are, we have to change the Y position of the first one or the second one, then how it works? Means I am not getting it what you are We are using, a, we are giving an input and we are getting another output. We have to change the Y position of the, just the output, not the input. Then how output does it Output and input are on not two different ways. Okay, how does that happen? They are not, that is only the position to be either in upward direction or lower direction. Then voltage is applied by the effect multiple amplifier, that is the gate. Here, this only the voltage of this CRO beam can be made, you know, placed either in vertical direction or horizontal direction. Okay. So, that will be the next system, that is the vertical deflecting system. This vertical deflecting system it consists of these following points. That is, first one is the CRO probe. CRO probe it consists of a long wire, cable wire, which consists of an T and ground. Okay. So CRO tip and ground is there, that is in the CRO port. After that it is, next system is the next point is that of an input selector. We draw the diagram from this, that vertical reflecting system, that this is the CRO T. It consists of the R and C and it consists of the ground terminal. This section is called an CRO probe. Now, what is the functioning of this R and C is there? That we will see in detail when we see the various types of the CRO probes. Okay? Then, here, this is the first point within the CRO probe. On this CRO probe, now you can see here the tip it possesses some circuit that is R and C components at the ground. Level. And that's why if we interchange it, at the ground, if you connect the other terminal, you are not getting any display. So, CRO probe has to be connected proper, that ground should be connected to that of hand, proper ground of the circuit. If you make it reverse, you won't get the proper display. Okay? So, this is the first one is the CRO probe. Then, vertical input selector. Vertical input selector is the three position switch. One is the AC. Then, in between, it consists of a ground terminal. And last one is that of an DC. Okay? So, this input selector with a three position switch, this we can select on the front panel control. What is the selector for this? That is AC, ground, and DC. So, this is a CRO control, which is there on the CRO front panel. Okay? When we connect, when we select the AC, 
when we put the switch on the graphite AC, what will happen? Only the AC signal of the input which we have went here, the input signal, only the AC signals will be connected to that of a vertical amplifier, the further circuitry. Because the capacitor it blocks the DC components. Okay? So only the AC signal will pass through this and will be going further to the further circuitry, which is called the input attenuator. If it is on the DC, what will happen? Only the DC will be connected. That means all the AC and DC components have been carried forward towards the next circuit, there is the input attenuator. Then what's the use of the ground here in between? Why the ground will be there? Provide the unwanted signal. To avoid the unwanted signal. That is from very very big changing from AC to DC, it has to be momentarily ground. So that any stolen voltage is there, that will be eliminated. Okay? So that is the function of this ground, and that's why ground is always between AC and DC. So this is the second law, second part, that is the input selector. Then it will go to input attenuator. Now this input attenuator what it consists of? It consists of the various combination of the attenuator resistor and attenuator capacitor. Okay. Depending upon this resistance and capacitor variations, we are getting a various amplified signal of the input. Okay. So that various amplified signal of the input will be getting when we are when it is connected to the of an input attenuator. Now there are the, these various R A and C A combinations are there. These R A and C A combinations, depending upon that, we are getting the corresponding amplifications. And this is control on the CRO front panel which is called an volts for division. Okay, so when we are changing this volts per division, what, what we are doing is we are changing the various combination of this RA and CA. In case of in some CROs, RA changes that is related with that of an volts per division and there is also the variable of the CA on the CRO front panel control what it is? Variable. Okay. Okay? Have you seen this now? Yes. Just try for it once again. So this variable, generally we are changing the value of the resistance. The capacitor value can also change. Okay? So that capacitor value has to be fixed at certain position, which is can be written as an can. If you have not noticed, when we are using C or C once again, that can position has to be there. That can position is there, that means the capacitor value we are keeping fixed and we are changing the value of resistors. Okay? If we change this variable now, again the voltage will be changes and that won't match with that of an input signal. Okay? During practical, when you handle this here, first time you may get it that it's not matching with whatever it's required, whatever is the expected value. Why it is? Because the variable now or this variable is stored in the maximum or the fixed position. It may be changes, that means array is also changing, CA is also changing, and accordingly the amplification and further things carry out. Okay? So this is the third section which is called the CR Pro. This is the input selector, this is the input attenuator, and this input attenuator it goes to the further things that is the vertical amplifier. It goes to the further things, vertical amplifier which produce the two output signals which are applied to the vertical deflecting plates of the cell. Now this vertical amplifier, this here this we are seeing, input selector, attenuator and then vertical amplifier. Now this vertical amplifier it consists of the two stage amplifiers are there. So output of this input attenuator, it applied to the first stage amplifier which is the FET input amplifier, it consists of the input amplifier phase inverter, driver amplifier and output amplifier. Okay, so first stage of the amplifier means FET input amplifier. Can okay, you guess what it is? Means why it is FET input amplifier? To avoid the loading effect. It has a very high input, high input and therefore as because of this, to avoid the loading effect, it has the high input resistance. Okay, then that way goes to the 
phase inverter. Okay. What does phase inverter do? It produces the two signals which are exactly equal but they will be out of phase. So two equal and out of phase signals they are produced by the end of a phase inverter. That goes to the driver amplifier and output amplifier which consists the circuits of the Y positions and all that. Okay? And finally it is applied to the other hand two okay. vertical effective plates. Okay? So this is the vertical amplifier, then the horizontal amplifier. So this shall I continue? Yes. Okay. So this horizontal amplifier again consists of the three circuits. That is the transfer generator, trigger, and horizontal amplifier. So transfer generator here, this <coughs> transfer generator it is a UZD. It consists of the UZD. Then UZD can be work as a manual switch. By working of this UZD, we are getting the switch generator. That is this type of the signal is there. Okay. Now first, how this circuit works? I will explain in short. That first the UZD will be turning off only. The resistance and capacitor is there. Capacitor voltage is zero. Okay. As the resistance is turned off, the capacitor voltage what it do? It will be gone increasing. It increases till it becomes maximum. No. It doesn't reach towards the maximum, but when it reaches to a certain voltage, which is called the pinch of voltage of the UJT. Pinch of voltage means the voltage required for making the UJT as on. So when this voltage reaches towards the pinch of voltage, UJT will be turned on. As the UJT turns on, the capacitor instead of further rising towards the higher value, it will be start decreasing. Okay? Because of this UJT, the capacitor decreases very far, and therefore we are getting the rising edge and falling edge. Okay? How it is right? How it is decreased? Does it decrease towards the zero? No. It decreases towards the zero, but not exactly zero. Here it decreases to minimum voltage because till this time the UJT is on. So, UJT for making in the on state it requires some minimum voltage and therefore when the voltage of the capacitor is less than UJT minimum voltage, again the UJT will become off and the capacitor will be increasing. And that's why we are getting the continuous rise and decrease that means we are getting a sawtooth waveform because the circle of the UJT on and off will be go on. And we are getting the time page generator that means we are getting the smooth voltage. Okay? Then after this sweep voltage, it has to be a trigger sweep voltage. Trigger sweep voltage means to make the input signal from the vertical and to make this signal has to be synchronized with each other. Here this is the vertical signal, this is the sweep voltage. It has to be synchronized with each other. There is and diode is introduced in between. Okay. What the function of this diode? Capacitor voltage will be increased from the minimum, same as in the first circuit. It doesn't reach towards the pinch voltage also, it reaches to the VD, that is voltage required for diode to become polarized, then it will become clamped there. And unless and until it is told to do lower, it is told to do, this remains at here, that will remain constant. Now who will tell you that this trigger input is there? Now this trigger input what there? That is external, a part of the vertical input is applied to the trigger circuit. And it slightly lowers the pinch of voltage. So momentarily the pinch of voltage of this UJT is lower and therefore UJT will be turning on. As the UJT is turning on, the voltage will be gone previously. Okay? So depending upon this vertical input, depending upon the bigger input signal, this voltage will be increased and decreased, and that has to be adjusted by that of an external circuit which is called a trigger. Okay? Next is this is how the synchronization means. In case of any synchronization, just see, this is the linear rise is there. Each time the starting point will be same here. So when this starting point will be same for both vertical and horizontal signal, then only we are getting a stable CRT display. Otherwise, the CRT will not be stable, display will not be stable, that means the wave will be continuously moving. And that is done by that of an adjusting the trigger signal. That is the leveling now of the CRT. <coughs> this is the horizontal reflecting systems. And then finally, the power supply. So, seven system is that of an power supply, which is of the two types, high voltage and low, low voltage. High voltage is used to that of an CRT. CRT. Okay? 
around 1,500 or 2,000 volts are there, which is required for the CRP to make the electron beam as very high velocity electron beam. So high voltage is applied to the CRP and low voltage is for all the associatory circuits related for the functioning of the CRP. Okay? So this is how the CRP works. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.